Uh, thank you very much. And uh, thanks a lot for the invitation to speak uh, at the seminar. Uh, I'd like to discuss uh, the grondelik Serre conjecture uh, and uh, it, specifically its uh, case, uh, its uh, certain case in, in mixed characteristic. Uh, and let me begin by just uh, uh, reviewing what the grondelik Serre conjecture is, is about. So uh, let me begin by uh, recalling the statement of the grothendieck Serre conjecture. Uh, it concerns torsors and their under inductive loops and uh, says that uh, generically trivial torsors are uh, the risk locally trivial over non singular basis. Uh, so, for that, let me, well, just to start somewhere and uh, let me recall uh, the notion of a reductive group scheme over an arbitrary, over an arbitrary ring on arbitrary scheme. Uh, so a reductive group over, say, a ring, uh, over a ring R, is a smooth affine group scheme uh, whose uh, geometric fibers are reductive groups. So smooth affine uh, R group scheme, R group scheme uh, G, uh, such that, well, and then there's a fibral condition, uh, name, well, which is uh, for that for every for every fiber, in other words, for every for every prime uh, p of this of this ring R, uh, the, the the geometric uh, fiber of uh, of G at p, in other words, the base change of G to the algebraic closure of uh, of the residue field that is p, uh, is first of all uh, connected. So my reductive groups are, are connected as is the convention in, in, in SJ3. And, uh, and uh, this, this algebraic group of an algebraically closed field has no, uh, well, it's reductive. In other words, has no uh, normal subgroup uh, that is uh, unipotent, that's connected unipotent, or in other words, that this, uh, that is an iterated extension of, uh, of GAs. That is an iterated extension of uh, of the additive group uh, by by itself. Uh, all right, and so uh, the the structure theory of reductive group schemes has uh, has been developed in in SJ three, and uh, uh, one 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 knows this. Uh, the most uh, somehow most basic reductive uh, most basic reductive groups. Uh, G are, are so-called so split reductive groups. Uh, and uh, these are somehow, I mean, at least on a basic level, they can be understood uh, co combinatorially. So these, uh, these have been uh, classified uh, in, terms, in terms of combinatorial data. So have been uh, classified uh, combinatorially. Uh, by Chevalier. Uh, in, uh, okay, well, I will not uh, recall like the precise statement of that classification because this is not really not really rele relevant. Uh, it's in terms of root data, dual Z, dual Z lattices with uh, sets of roots and co-roots satisfying certain uh, conditions, roots and corresponding co-roots paired to two and uh, there, there's other. Axioms. Uh, let me just uh, illustrate this with a with a list of uh, with a list of examples. The most uh, basic, uh, I mean, the simplest uh, reductive groups, uh, split reductive groups, are just tori, split tori, powers of multiplicative group. Of course, we have uh, GLN, uh, SLN, for example, PGLN, uh, orthogonal groups, uh, spin groups. Many uh, different uh, types of uh, split groups, uh, like well, like so. And of course, uh, they need not be uh, somehow absolutely uh, 
simple, for example, one could one could have uh, one could take a product of uh, I mean one could have different different types appearing. One takes a product of SL two N and uh, and the spin group uh, of some other size and quotients by a central embed by a diagonal embedded central mu two in both both groups and one obtains another split in the groups. In, in fact, this list is this list is infinite as is the classification. And uh, well, for completeness, I'll just mention uh, as a well-known fact from SGA3 that uh, uh, the, with this definition of uh, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, that was strange. Okay, let me try again. Uh, so uh, every every reductive uh, every reductive G group G is split at R locally on on the base. So in some sense, uh, the split uh, the split ones up to up to up to twists up to up to forms classify this combinatorial classification captures. Everything in some sense, although of course uh, there's a lot of arithmetic rich, richness uh, involved in this in this at all locally at all locally on R, and the conjecture that we'll uh, be discussing in this uh, in in this talk uh, due to Groton they can share, although they they post it in the, in a more restrictive uh, in a more restrictive setting, but. Uh, the mo modern form of this conjecture uh, predicts that if one has a regular local ring for a regular uh, local ring uh, R, so regular just means that the dimension of R is equal to, to the dimension of its uh, cotangent space at, uh, at, this max at this unique maximal ideal. Uh, so for a regular local ring and a reductive reductive R group scheme uh, G, uh, every, uh, well, no non-trivial G torsor trivializes over the fraction field of R. No non-trivial G torsor uh, becomes trivial over the fraction field, becomes trivial over the fraction field of this, of this, of this domain. Uh, in other words, the, the map of, uh, well, one can write this somewhat homologically, although this is really just amounts to the same thing. The, uh, the, 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 the pointed set of torsors, of, of G torsors over R maps the corresponding pointed set over the fraction field. And the conjecture is that the kernel of this map is actually trivial. And from this one, in, one concludes that, uh, I mean, if this holds for any G, for any inner form of G in particular, one concludes that in fact, this map is even injective. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll take this, we'll take this form of the, of the conjecture as our, uh, as, as, as the thing we're, we're discussing. And uh, of course, there are many, uh, many choices for, for, for this G. Many concrete cases that one that, that one has, for instance, uh, G could be. Well, let's just uh, let's just begin with some you know some very basic uh, examples. For for instance, for, for GM or for GLN more generally, this this conjecture is is, is trivially true because uh, the source is uh, the source is, is trivial. There's no non-trivial vector bundle over a local ring. From this case, one one deduces the case of SLN. Perhaps, perhaps the first non-trivial case is that of PGLN. This case was in fact settled by Grotendieck in relation to his study of the Brouwer group. Uh, he proved the corresponding injectivity uh, from uh, from uh, H two. Uh, I mean, corresponding injectivity property for for the Brouwer group and concluded uh, concluded this injectivity in the case one G is PGLN. And this was kind of one of the early evidences for, for a general conjecture, something that uh, in fact led Grotendieck to, to, to conjecture this, uh, uh, 
um, this uh, this statement that had also been considered in Saren's somewhat uh, slightly different, uh, uh, more restrictive setting somehow. Uh, okay, but uh, the the concrete case uh, that I'd like to illustrate uh, this for, for the purposes of, of the talk concerns uh, quadratic forms, namely if two is two is a unit, if two is invertible in this uh, in this regular local ring. Then one consequence of Grothendieck Serre is that non-isomorphic, non-isomorphic, non-degenerate uh, quadratic forms uh, quadratic forms over R uh, do not become isomorphic over uh, over the fraction field of R. Well, there's a little bit of work uh, of deducing this uh, from 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 actual uh, from the actual conjecture of, of Grothendieck's error, but one knows how to do that. And anyway, so fr from this uh, from this general statement, it follows a concrete consequence for for quadratic forms. One has two non-isomorphic non-degenerate quadratic forms, and two is invertible in our regular local ring. Then they do not become isomorphic over over a fraction field. Uh, so something that I mean, that one uh, that's not so. Uh, it's a somewhat concrete statement that's not so so simple to to argue directly. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's turn to to, to discussing uh, the cases uh, of the conjecture that have been established uh, previously, and in fact there are very many. Uh, Cases and there are many papers on, on this, but let me just go in broad strokes, somehow in general classes of uh, of, of results, uh, and let me begin with uh, the the case when G is commutative. The simplest type of reductive group are just uh, it's just a torus. So when G is a torus, uh, in in this case already the conjecture is not uh, is not a triviality. It is first splittory, but uh, for general not necessarily splittory. Uh, it is not, but was this was settled by Kovitelen and Sansuk uh, using the technique of flask resolutions of uh, of Torre. In fact, uh, the technique was invented uh, in part for this for this for this purpose. Uh, so this is the case when G is as simple as as possible. Uh, as far as the ring R is concerned, of course, if R is of dimension zero zero, namely a field, that's that's a, that's a triviality, but. Uh, the next simplest case is one R of dimension one, namely a discrete valuation ring. Uh, this was settled by Nesnevich uh, in uh, his uh, PhD thesis at Harvard. Well, perhaps he had a couple of uh, simplifying assumptions and his arguments, I mean, there were, uh, anyway, the, the, he, the, the, there's later work where uh, his arguments were, were explained, and uh, there was also input by by Tits, uh, who knew how to do the complete uh, case when R is when R is complete. Uh, that that case uses Bruhatitz theory, which was kind of in the, emerging at the time. Uh, anyway, Nesnevich uh, figured out the case when R is a discrete relation ring. Uh, roughly speaking, that uses an approximation technique due to due to harder. To reduce to, to the case of complete R. In the case of complete R, uh, one uses Bruhatitz theory and theory of parahori, uh, parahori groups uh, to, to conclude one, one reduces to anisotropic G and then uses unicity, well, uses properties of Bruhatitz building. Uh, okay, now this, uh, the case when R is of dimension one, in fact, implies another general, fairly general case when R is uh, Henselian, for example, complete. And the the reduction is is, is not that difficult. Some, somehow one just chooses a if R is Henselian, one just chooses a prime of height one. The localization of R at that height one prime is a discrete relation ring, and the quotient is again the Henselian. Uh, a quotient by the prime is a Henselian uh, Henselian regular ring, uh, regular local ring of dimension one less, and one inducts by dimension. Of course, uh, the key property that one uses here is that. If R is Henselian, one has a torsor, then by Hensel's lemma, to trivialize the torsor, it suffices to trivialize it over the residue field. One can lift, uh, one can then lift the residual point to, 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 to an R-valued point. 
And so somehow one can do induction on the dimension to find that the uh, residue field value uh, valued point reduced to the case of, of, of DVRs. Uh, so beyond these, beyond these cases, when either G or R uh, are simple, the next general case is when R contains a field. And this, in fact, received uh, much attention. Well, first one considered when, when, G is, when G is split, for instance, when G is as simple as possible as, as well. And there, there were many, many works on, on, on this case. I, I do not attempt to really summarize them uh, all here. Let me just mention that uh, building on all these previous, previous works, uh, th this culminated in Fedorov and Panin uh, resolving this case when R contains a field completely in, in 2015, at least when that field is infinite. And then later Panin removed the, con I mean, also extended the case when, uh, when the field uh, is finite. So any, um, any equal characteristic, uh, any equal characteristic case and Fedorov later simplified uh, this argument in equal characteristic. Anyway, so what the case when R contains a field is, is known uh, and, uh, Beyond that, so so then the uh, the main open case is mixed characteristic, and the mixed characteristic there there are some sporadic cases known, but uh, well again let me not be exhaustive here. I apologize to uh, people who have worked on this, and I'm not not really going into detail here. But uh, there's there's several sporadic cases known in in mixed characteristic, but no. Somehow, no no general uh, result has had been known in this uh, in, in this setting, and uh, the 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 result that I'd like to to discuss today concerns this mixed characteristic case, and uh, it uh, somehow concerns also the simplest class of uh, of R and G uh, in in this uh, in this mixed characteristic uh, setting. So. Namely, the case when uh, G is split, as discussed above, and uh, and R is unnumbered. So to to get to that, let me uh, let me just uh, recall what I mean by by unnumbered, so that we have our convention straight. So a regular local a regular local ring R with maximal ideal M is said to be unnumbered. Is, is said to be unramified if either if either it contains a field. Well, this is not going to be really the case that is our main focus because uh, in this case the conjecture is known uh, in full. But anyway, this, this case is included, and uh, our arguments will will also not make a distinction. Okay, so uh, if either R contains a field or R is of mixed characteristic, which means that the uh, residue field is of, of R is of positive characteristic uh, P and the, and the fraction field is of characteristic zero. So R is of mixed uh, characteristic uh, zero P. And this characteristic of the residue field uh, does not lie in the square of the maximal ideal of, uh, of, of R. So, uh, okay, these are uh, the, the unramified uh, regular Regular local rings are the simplest ones uh, in in mixed in mixed characteristic. These are, for example, smooth uh, smooth rings of uh, sorry local rings of smooth schemes over over uh, over ZP or over over Z of residue characteristic P, such as localization of the relative affine space at the origin uh, in characteristic P, or in fact any any local ring of a smooth of a smooth uh, Z localized at P algebra. And in fact, there's a converse to this uh, due to Popescu, in, so, in some sense, a converse uh, that we'll get to get to in, in, in a brief moment. In fact, uh, okay, so for presentation purpose, say I, I'm restricting to unramified R, of course, somehow a standard technical improvement is that instead of requiring that R be unramified, one requires that it's somehow relatively unramified. One fixes instead of Z localized at P, a, 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 a discrete relation ring of same X characteristic zero P, a discrete relation ring O whose residue field K perhaps is perfect or I mean, okay. And uh, R is 
then somehow geometrically regular over that over that mixed characteristic uh, DVR. That's a more general setting, and in fact, what I'm going to talk about works in that slightly more more general setting is sometimes sometimes useful to have that uh, to have that improvement in mind. Uh, and uh, after all, it's a more general statement. It could be, for instance, uh, smooth. Uh, I mean, smooth scheme over 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 the Turing of integers of uh, of some of some number field is, is also okay. Even if it's ramified at p, that's uh, I mean, th those kind of rings are not unramified, but uh, there are versions of the results I'm going to present uh, that hold also for for these uh, for these more general uh, somehow unramified uh, regular local rings. Okay, so the result that I'd like uh, to discuss uh, concerns the growth mixer conjecture. So the growth mixer conjecture. Holds for uh, uh, holds in the case uh, in the case when uh, G is split. So the simplest, I mean, the simplest general kind of uh, reductive reductive group scheme and R is unramified. So in, in mixed characteristic, uh, as long as one assumes G to be split, and the and the ring R and R find the, um, the the conjecture the conjecture holds. Let me uh, let me right away uh, say that the proof uh, the, the proof uses uh, uses a known case uses a known case of of DVRs in this Navage case. Uh, the discrete relation ring case, uh, but not, uh, but not, but not the other cases. In particular, it does not use uh, it does not use results of uh, Fedorov and Pan in in, in uh, equal characteristic. It's not that we kind of assume their work and then uh, try to kind of you know use that uh, in in some reductions, but we rather take their methods and extend their methods and uh, in a way that, uh, I mean, to give us some, uh, some additional ideas to, to make them work in next characteristic. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll be discussing those in, in, in detail, but uh, let me just uh, begin by, uh, by mentioning a couple of corollaries. So first of all, that uh, concrete case that I've been mentioning for purposes uh, of, Illustrating the, this this whole business, this concrete case about quadratic forms, about quadratic forms, uh, holds for an amplified R. So if one has two non-degenerate uh, quadratic forms of an amplified uh, uh, regular local ring and the generically they're isomorphic then they're actually isomorphic to begin with and in fact one can allow r to be semi-local that's that is done in 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 the paper and there's also a version of this of this of this main of this main result uh, in the case uh, one r is one r is uh, semi-local is somehow somewhat of a technical improvement but in fact it is useful because uh, Sometimes, when one considers reductions of this uh, of this conjecture, one runs into a semi-local R, essentially, well, essentially because if G is uh, say semi-simple and simply connected, then it splits into 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 simple pieces after some after some finite et al cover of of R. That finite et al cover need not be need not be local, of course. And then one, this restriction of scalars, anyway, one passes that cover, and then one ends up with a problem over some local rather than local, local R. So it's natural to to, to begin with some local to begin with. But uh, okay, but uh, for simplicity, I'll just assume that R is local. And uh, the second, the second uh, somewhat concrete uh, corollary is 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 a, is a product formula that follows from this result. Uh, in other words, if one has an unramified regular uh, local ring R and uh, an element uh, an element non-zero element R inside inside R the 
the array completion our head of R and uh, and the split reductive uh, R group G then uh, the R hat with uh, R inverted valued points of, of G are just a product of the R hat valued points and the R with uh, little R inverted valued points, a kind of product formula. Uh, okay, so for, for concrete choices of G, this is really kind of a concrete problem and con for concrete choices of, of R itself, such as uh, such as these local rings. So at an affine space, there are many possible choices for, for, for this R, for instance, X1 or so. And uh, such product formulas, however, they're not uh, something that one knows how to prove directly. It's rather by by the relationship to torsors and patching that one kind of deduces from 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 the fact that uh, due to due to this result, there's no way to glue up a non-trivial torsor of non-trivial G torsor over R that would become trivial over over R over R with R in, R inverted and over and also over R hat. This uh, I mean such torsors have become trivial over over there and over there. They correspond to like double cosets uh, of here by 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 patching and uh, the fact that uh, there are no no such torsors uh, allows us to uh, to get this product formula. Okay, well, uh, in fact, there are many further concrete consequences just by, by taking the. Uh, just by taking special classes of G, but I, I don't want to uh, I don't want to go into that. Instead, uh, instead I'd like to turn to discussing the steps of the of of the proof of this of this main result. The ideas that uh, that allow uh, one to 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 move past uh, equi characteristic uh, uh, case that was established. Uh, that was established for for several years now. So, uh, so for this, I'll, uh, I'll I'll fix the setting. So we have uh, we have an unramified regular local ring, unramified regular local ring R, uh, and we have a G torsor over R, a generically trivial. G torsor E over R uh, for a split for a split reductive R group uh, G. Okay, and uh, according to the grotnik sir conjecture, this uh, this torsor should should uh, should should be trivial. That's what we. That's what would like to. That's what would like to argue. Uh, so we we want we seek we seek to show that E is trivial and um, said more concretely. Well, it just means it's isomorphic to, to G uh, equipped to its right translation action. All my torsors are, are right torsors because I want to take kind of right quotients and their sections to correspond to, to torsors on a total space like G mod P R points should uh, uh, the fiber should be should be a P torsor. Uh, wait, okay, so uh, we want E to be trivial. And uh, the main case, even though I do not, I mean, I'll be somehow in the argument, I'll be doing the equal characteristic case when G is split in, in parallel, but I don't want to kind of focus on that because uh, that case is known anyway. Uh, so the main case really is when R is a mixed characteristic, mixed characteristic zero P. And, uh, and well, so before uh, telling you the, the, main, the main idea that, uh, let me actually begin with perhaps the main difficulty of this. So of this and actually other related problems about torsors or um, well, similar kind, similar flavor problems over regular over regular rings. The main the main difficulty is that one somehow, I mean, 
philosophically one cannot enlarge one cannot enlarge this uh, this regular ring R basically because that would kill power source. For instance, if one would kind of be able to concoct some sort of reduction to completion or or hensalization, then in fact the whole problem is done. That case being uh, known uh, to follow from from dimension one case. Uh, so the only thing that we can do and. I mean, and also there's not so much that we can do with G because many, I mean, most reductive groups, semi simple groups, they don't really have uh, many normal subgroups. I mean, we cannot really simplify uh, G's significantly. So we can only work on, we can only work on R. We cannot, and moreover, we cannot enlarge it. We, 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 we need to somehow uh, shrink it. That's the only, that's the only operation that, uh, that we're allowed. In fact, this the same phenomenon that is uh, witnessed in problems such as Basquillian conjecture, for instance, uh, previously a so-called conjecture of, of Sayre settled by um, settled by Quillen, where um, it was a Lindell trick and so, 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 uh, so on, and uh, conjectures in, in uh, uh, algebraic A theory, such as Gerstein conjecture, also has all these phenomena uh, are, are present there. So this is nothing. Uh, I mean, this is this is a phenomenon of these of these types of problems. Uh, no, this is a, uh, sorry. Um, okay. So, uh, what what kind of technique uh, do we have to to for for the shrinking? So uh, one. One well-known uh, technique is a Popesco approximation, uh, which which tells us that our R, uh, the, the assumption that R be unramified, amounts to the same amounts. Uh, well, according to this theorem, uh, such such R are just filtered direct limits of uh, smooth algebras uh, over Z localized at P. So in fact, that that example of uh, of uh, an unramified regular local ring, uh, local ring of a smooth algebra over ZP, is in some sense uh, captures all the phenomena that we want to study for this problem. At least because due to a limit argument, we can uh, therefore uh, we can therefore uh, assume without loss of generality by passing by passing to limit that R is one of these uh, one of these. Uh, Constituents of a direct limit, namely R is a local, R is a local ring, at the closed, uh, well, at the point, but in fact, there's not so much uh, loss of general to assume that it's an, even at the closed point, uh, x and x, uh, of, of a smooth, of a smooth affine, uh, z, well, even connected, say. So that it's spec of some domains, spec of some regular domain, uh, connected uh, z localized at p uh, scheme x. Uh, all right, and e, our torsor e that we wish to study by that same limit argument is defined begins life over this of this same x, so is defined over all of x. Uh, and uh, okay, it's defined over all of X, and it's it's how it, well we also know that it's generically trivial. That also passes to the limit. We want to kind of remember that. Uh, and the way in which this is going to be relevant for, for us, so of course, uh, e is e is trivial at the at the over a fraction field of X. Uh, but uh, what what we we'll, what we'll do is we'll choose a Borel subgroup of of G uh, that well okay so. That uses uh, at least quasi splitness of G, so uh, and we'll consider this torsor E modulo that Borel. This is going to be proper because G mod B is proper, uh, flag variety is proper, and uh, we'll use the relative criterion uh, to to extend the generic trivialization of of G. Uh, anyway, so. Okay, so by using some of this value to create theorem of properness, so uh, E reduces to, to a torsor over the unipotent radical of a Borel. So unipotent 
this shows the notation for uniform radical of a Borel, uh, of a Borel B in G, a Borel which is part of a, spl of a splitting of, of GC. Uh, so this reduces to, to this torsor away, away from a closed subscheme, from a closed subscheme Y in, in X of four dimension at least two. Right, so uh, E is trivial generically. And so E mod B is trivial generically. It has a point and that point by value to create a properness extends of uniquely over every height one, a height one point. So E reduces to a B torsor, to a B torsor away from such a, such a closed subscheme of code dimension at least two. And in fact, if one somehow is clever about how one does this argument, and localizes X further so that the intervening uh, B modulo the unipoint radical of B, namely a torus uh, torsor is, is the torus torsor is, is trivial. Uh, that, um, I mean, our E, in fact, it reduces even to the unipoint radical of B torsor away from this closed subscheme of codimension at, at least two. So it's uh, kind of a point where, where splitness is used, or at least was a splitness. I mean, uh, all right, uh, so, 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 so that's what we have. And the idea, the, 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 the idea then is to, I mean, we need to tackle this difficulty somehow of, uh, we need to, to shrink R or anyway, to, to do something with R to, to, to make progress. And the idea is to, uh, to, expose, uh, to expose geometric structure Geometric structure of R by the following, uh, well, by following two steps. So first of all, our X, okay, it's affine uh, over uh, over Z localized at P, uh, smooth, and uh, we can compactify X to something projective. Well, we just embed X to a projective space. Take the take the schematic. Take us, I mean, X is affine, so it's uh, closed in some affine space, and then take the closure projective space. If we do that intelligently, we get something flat, something torsion free. Of course, a posterior we can kill torsion. So that's anyway. But the, the main point is that we uh, that compactification we can require that to be Con Macaulay. If if we knew if we knew resolution of singularities, we could even take a regular, but well, well we, we we don't, but. The Con Macaulay version of resolution of singularities is known, and we'll use this uh, to, to, to build this to build this compactification x x bar of x. Uh, and uh, all right, uh, okay, so that will be our x bar. I'll comment uh, in a little bit about these these Con Macaulayfications that are implicitly used here, and and uh, we also take the closure, take the closure y bar. Uh, so now a closed subscheme of of this x bar, of our uh, of our favorite closed subscheme y of x away from which our our torso, our torso becomes a lot simpler than uh, than uh, than than otherwise. So this uh, the construction, the construction of of this of this x bar using uses mockalifications. The Con Macaulay version of resolution of singularities, which are known uh, in, uh, in 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 all generality, so so this builds on work of of Kawasaki and uh, and Faultings, and has well recently settled uh, in full, roughly speaking. Okay, so um, I mean uh, anyway, the, the version that that we'll need. Uh, says uh, says precisely that that if we if we take uh, a, if we take the schematic closure say of x in some projective space uh, of uh, um, over z z localized at p then there exists uh, an x bar uh, a con Macaulay uh, modification con Macaulay and this map is birational. Uh, such that okay, so, so such that this map is an isomorphism over 
over the Con Macaulay locus of this of this x tilde, and of course that Con Macaulay locus contains contains x because x is even smooth, uh, and so x becomes becomes an open of some of something that's uh, of something that's Con Macaulay, and what's what's behind here is that basically for any Noetherian scheme which is reasonable enough, such as quasi excellent say a variety over a field or phi type over over z localized at p or over z. Uh, admits a, a proper birational map, projective birational map, which is an isomorphism over the con macaulay locus of, of, of the base. So it admits this con macaulay version of resolution of singularities. And this, uh, this result that was settled here without, without, the, without the isomorphy over, over the CM locus, this was already known by, by Kawasaki, at least for varieties over a field. Anyway, so we'll use these macrofications, but uh, like the only thing that we really need, I mean, one does not really need to know much about uh, what is going on in, in this in this input to, to be able to, uh, like, th this really summarizes the, the properties that we'll, that we'll need from, uh, from, from, from a geometric input. Okay, so X admits this, uh, this reasonably nice compactification, uh, and the second geometric step is, uh, is to adapt Artin's technique from SG4, Artin's uh, good neighborhood, good neighborhoods technique, uh, technique from SG4, uh, to, to this Con Macaulay setting, so to X bar. So roughly speaking, well, okay. So uh, this x bar it has it has x in it, and when it has a little x, the point that we really really care about, uh, the local ring at this little x, uh, and uh, well, Artin's result is that uh, well, it's in a case when x is maybe smooth or x bar is anyway. So we're applying to closed field, and uh, it's in slightly different setting. But roughly speaking, it says that this little x has a nice open neighborhood in this x bar, such that that neighborhood is, is a relative curve, a relative smooth curve, which admits a nice compactification, a relative smooth curve over an affine space. So what we, what we get in, in our setting uh, by, by this method, I mean, by adapting it, uh, uh, so, well, okay, so let me just su summarize uh, what these geometric inputs actually uh, give us if carried out properly. So this R, the local ring of, of, of little x and x, this has an affine open neighborhood, affine open neighborhood, uh, u in, in x, u in x bar, sorry. Uh, and this affine open neighborhood is a, in turn, SCM con Macaulay, well, U is con Macaulay because X bar is con Macaulay, but uh, more importantly, it's a, it's a flat uh, relative curve. A relative curve uh, over, over, some, over some S, which is an affine open, in uh, in the affine space over Z localized at P of dimension relative dimension of X uh, minus one. So relative dimension relative dimension minus one. So this S is affine affine neighborhood affine neighborhood of, of the origin of of the origin of this of this uh, relative affine space. Okay, I mean. Uh, like x is not zero dimensional, we can as, we can assume that because otherwise uh, our r is just a D, is just a DVR, the case known by Nisnevich. So I'm implicitly assuming that when I'm writing things like this, and uh, that's that's an interesting case. Okay, and uh, so this Artin's technique of good neighborhoods uh, allows us to present an an affine neighborhood of 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 u uh, of of x, sorry, in in x bar as a relative curve uh, over, over the affine space. And somehow because U is, is Con Macaulay, this, this curve is automatically going to be flat because the dimensions match up somehow. There's a, 
I mean, the, the dimension formula holds in that uh, this is of relative dimension uh, this over 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 z localized at p, and this is of relative dimension the relative dimension of x, and the fibers and of, of one one dimensional. This uh, this dimension formula, which uh, basically flatness criterion, which amounts to Auslan the Buxbaum formula, uh, is essentially. And one important piece uh, that actually plays a crucial role here is that u admits a compactification u bar over this s. So this map is a pi bar if this map is pi. Uh, OK. Uh, flat relative, relative curve. And this, this u is smooth, smooth over s at x, at our point x that, 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 that we're interested in. Uh, OK, so and admits a compactification like like here like compactification uh, like so such that uh, okay so admits a compactification you your new bar such that uh, e, u bar minus u is is finite over over s. So it's really like uh, somehow u resembles the affine line and u bar resembles a projective line, if, if you wish. Uh, that's what this condition, informally speaking, tells us. Uh, OK, and, uh, and moreover, this whole picture is such that uh, our y bar, the close that we're kind of interested in, the, away from which we know what we understand our torso, its intersection with u is just the same as the intersection of that y, original y with u, and its intersection is finite over s uh, and lies and lies in the s smooth locus of u. Okay, so let me uh, briefly uh, comment on how we, we achieve this kind of this kind of structure. I mean, uh, basically, the idea once we have this compactification x bar, uh, the idea is to cut x bar by by this many uh, hypersurfaces, hypersurfaces that pass through that pass through x, and are chosen. I mean, sufficiently generically, so they are pass smoothly. Uh, smoothly at x, so we use kind of some kind of Bertini theorem. There's some subtleties if the residue field uh, is, is finite, but that's not, I mean, it's just a technicality, really. Uh, anyway, so we cut by these hypersurfaces, and the equations of these hypersurfaces give us, give us this map, roughly speaking, on, on coordinate algebras, so to speak. And if we choose an additional hypersurface, and this u bar is an open in some, in some weighted blow up of, of, of x bar, uh, Anyway, there's uh, there's some there's some game going on with with choosing you're choosing hypersurface sufficiently generically and so, so that they're sufficiently transversal to this to this y and and so on. But uh, I mean, in the interest of time, let me not really go into 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 into, into details about about what we do precisely here. I I just say that we. We use Bertini theorem heavily, and uh, I mean, and then we, we follow Artin's method, but we adapt it to this to, to, to this to this Colin Macaulay setting. Instead, let me let me. Okay, so this this somehow our geometric structure that we put that we put forward. Let me su summarize it with with a picture. So here's my affine space uh, of. Uh, over z localized at p of dimension the relative dimension of x uh, minus one, and we have our little open s uh, neighborhood of the origin, and our u becomes kind of a relative curve over over this. So it's a conmacaulay relative curve. Its fibers need not be irreducible, and uh, well, so it has a fiber over, over a generic point. It also could have several components. Uh, okay, so this is u going uh, going to our s, and here in the generic, the generic um, in a in a point sorry in a fiber over over zero we have we have a fixed uh, kind of point we 
we have our little point X and it's uh, it's infinitesimal neighborhood in the total space of X. Well, it's 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 like it's local ring is our spec R that, that we're interested in. And so spec R then maps to, to S simply because spec R is just the same as the local uh, as the local ring of uh, at this at this point X. Uh, okay, and we form a Okay, so that's that's what we have, and we also have our compactification u bar that's used later. But anyway, let's let me not focus on that. Uh, and we base change this. We base change this diagram to to, to to curve C over spec R, and this C comes equipped with a with a section. Uh, so this the section comes from the diagonal because the spec R appears somehow in both uh, factors, uh, and so we, we we get the section. And the section, in fact, lands in the smooth locus of uh, of, of of the curve because uh, because our x was a smooth point. Okay, so uh, that's a geometric picture, roughly that 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 we get this relative curve. And so, what what do we do next uh, with this? So, so, how how does this help actually? So the later steps. Uh, so we we get. Well, we get our C, which is just U, as I mentioned, times times spec R. This is a CM flat relative curve over R. All these properties are just by base change, and it comes equipped with a section delta in a smooth locus uh, that lands in a smooth locus, and we have script E, which is a G torsor, just a base change of our of our old E that we, that we wish to study a base change uh, along this top along the top arrow here uh, of, of, of our torsor. Okay, so uh, so this is a G torsor, G torsor over C, with uh, whose pullback along along the section is is our E because uh, well basically from how the section is constructed because that's just the diagonal. And we have a Z, which is the base change of Y intersect with, with U. Uh, we, we have uh, an R finite closed subscheme Of, uh, of C, in fact, of the smooth locus of C, because we are ensured that this Y intersect with U is C even smooth. We use Bertini theorem a lot for that. Uh, okay, and this, this Z is such that E restricted to C minus Z reduces to, to, to a torso under that unipotent radical of a, of a Borel. Okay, so we, we have this kind of geometric setting. Now we, we have a relative curve over 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 R, uh, and we have a torsor. We have a torsor script E, which pulls back to the, what we want to study. We actually want to show that script E is trivial, and we know this this kind of fact that is uh, away from this this finite closed subscheme introduces. I mean, it's significantly simpler. So now we'll we'll simplify. Uh, we'll. I mean, the goal is to simplify the curve U and the, uh, okay, so the, sec the next step is to generalize presentation lemmas due to Quillen and Gaber and uh, Panin. May I ask you a simple question? Yeah. The question is, what is the codimension of Z uh, in the curve C? Uh, sorry. What I is the codimension? Of this bed locus Z. Uh, ah yes, so yeah, the codimension of, of Z in in C, uh, I do not have control of that. It could be it could be larger than than one, for instance, which is a difference from what happens in in equal characteristic case. So Z could be very small. For instance, uh, C could in principle be something like the affine affine line over R, and R itself is maybe a local ring at the at the origin of the affine space. So. Z could be like the origin in the in the affine two space. It, Z need not be a hypersurface in, in 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 other words, and the complement C minus Z need not be affine. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is kind of a phenomenon that occurs in a setting that is not there in the in the in in equal characteristic. 
Okay, so uh, we, one channel is this presentation lemma uh, due to Quillen, uh, Gaber, and Panin. And there are many tricks about fine fields going on here. Uh, so to, to build a diagram, So first of all, one builds a finite morphism to the affine line. Well, that compactification was, was what is useful here. So C admits a compactification C bar, which is a base change of that U bar. So we get a finite morphism to A1, roughly speaking. And this morphism is automatically flat by that same miracle flatness because, uh, well, fibers are finite in dimensions of, of uh, I mean, sources called Macaulay and the basis uh, and the target is 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 regular, uh, so, so because C is CM, because C is Conn-Macaulay, that's somehow why that Conn-Macaulay was really important for 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 this whole business, to get automatic flatness of such maps, uh, and we also construct an affine open of uh, of C containing delta and affine open W, uh, okay, and F restricts to W. Now the point is. The main point of this presentation lemma is that, okay, so W, uh, we construct in such a way that it contains our Z, and Z maps isomorphically to, 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 to Z prime. And in fact, this, this, this diagram is Cartesian. So we, const we construct an, an affine open of Z, W, such that this Z is in fact a base change of Z prime uh, all along this, well, now only quasi-finite map to, to, the, to the affine line. And so this kind of diagram, this, this map is flat, this kind of diagram is, is, is useful for patching. I mean, I actually skip a, like one step because uh, maybe Z a priori could be a little bit large if there is the fields here are finite and it may not fit in, in, in the one, but anyway, that's an intermediate step that one that takes care of that. Okay, so once one has this, this diagram, one uses excision, now, even though Z is, is kind of really small and this complement perhaps is not affine, uh, one can, well, it's a, it's a trick that's somehow new in this, in this setting. Uh, one, one uses excision for quasi-coherent cohomology uh, to descend uh, E restricted to the uh, complement of, of, of Z in W uh, to, to a G torsor over over the affine line minus this z prime. Well, the point is that uh, so this uh, e restricted to the complement of, of z in w, this reduces to a torsor under under a unipotent radical, and so well morally it's just uh, I mean cohomology of of uh, unipotent radical of course has a filtration uh, by 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 root groups and and so on. So th this relates to to H ones of quasi coherent sheaves of vector bundles. In fact, and one uses excision for quasi coherent cohomology to show that then the torsor and the unipotent radical descends to a torsor in this kind of uh, excision type, type type of diagram. And the what this what this what this gets us is that one can use patching then, uh, similar to the last law patching. In fact, a little bit more subtle because now uh, Z is probably Pretty small, so not necessarily cut out by single equation, but anyway, it's not really a problem for patching. So one can use patching along this map F restricted to, to W, mapping to A1, uh, you know, flat map, to reduce to reduce to the case when our curve C is just the affine line. And by changing the coordinate, uh, delta is just a zero section. And then, the, well, then one just I mean, okay, so then this uh, things that have been considered extensively in the literature, torsors under the affine line, one extends E to a G torsor, to a G torsor E bar uh, over, over, over the projective line. And uh, well, it, de it, it depends on how one extends. I mean, one extends carefully and one imitates uh, the study of vector bundles over our projective uh, line. Anyway, okay, so uh, vector bundles on P1. What I want to say is that, uh, is that bundles on projective, on projective line have, have been studied over a field by, by, by Ragunathan and uh, Ramanan and by, by Shiel 
uh, and one uses that study over the rest of the field to, to, to get the relative statement and conclude that this that this that this pullback is actually is actually trivial. Well, okay, so I don't really give too many details here, but uh, these are steps that were that were that were that were that were that known before. So the, the new phenomena somehow are this are this this geometry that's going on here with this with this more qualification and and building this relative curve. And then there's some uh, there's this uh, excision point that is related to the to the to the new difficulty that z is z is potentially is potentially quite quite small. Okay, I could uh, go on more about about these terms, but I'm I'm a little over time, and I apologize for for technical difficulties that uh, prevented me from starting uh, starting on time. Okay. So thank you. So, so no, no clap, uh, no equality clap. <laughs> <laughs> Questions, comments, please. You can use the chat. Uh, if... So let me ask uh, a question. Uh -huh. Yes, this is about uh, geometry. So there is this uh, picture in the item two, in the item two. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, and there is uh, a finite map F uh, mm -hmm. uh, from C to a relatively fine line. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so is it something, uh, sorry about my commuted algebra, but is it something common? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, already very old that uh, such a ma map, uh, if C is coin Macaulay, then such a map is necessarily uh, flat. Uh, yeah, so this uh, this basically follows from uh, auslander busbaum formula, uh, which says uh, that for any module of a regular, of a regular, of a regular ring, uh, projective dimension of, of a module, find module of a regular ring, uh, plus the depth of that module over regular local ring is equal to the dimension of the support of them. And so now if one applies, so C, so this M is now like the coordinate ring of, of R of, of C roughly speaking and and we want project dimension to be to be zero so that M be free. So we want depth, we want large depth. And the Con Macaulay property precisely is the thing that the depth equals the dimension. So that's how one gets this. Uh, that's how one gets the uh, flatness of the. Then the coordinate ring of C is, is a vector bundle over the coordinate ring here, and, and the flatness follows. Thank you. Thank you. That could be useful. Okay. Okay. Other other questions. There's a question. question in the chat. How far is the result uh, of your corollary from reducing? Rodnick's air conjecture to the case of a complete R. So uh, I guess the problem is that, uh, like, if we could show this corollary by some uh, independent means, then we could, of course, use it to reduce the Grotnik's air conjecture to, to the case of a complete regular local ring R. But the problem really is that the argument is backwards. One first uh, shows the Grotnik's air conjecture in the relevant case, and then one deduces the corollary. So it's uh, Kind of, I mean, one cannot really like then take this corollary and then start start proving something about that because that's already used in the argument of the corollary. Like, certainly, if one had some method of proving such product formulas, then uh, one would be done with this problem. One could reduce the completion, and this would all be uh, this is it would it would it would be done. But it's just really really kind of difficult to to, to prove it. Uh, just with bare hands. Okay. Other question. I have one, but my. Uh, um, but I maybe have someone. A... Some. So. Yes. Yeah, yes. Please. Okay. I have a comment, my dear. Mm -hmm. uh, but. Uh, sorry. Uh, firstly, uh, I apologize. I should know uh, how to pronounce correctly the. Uh, Family name of the speaker. This is the question to speak. Uh, just now, just 
Yeah, same here. So, she's um, nice. Just uh, please uh, uh, go to again to this diagram uh, in the two. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, no, perhaps. No, perhaps to the diagram where you. Uh, constructed the relative of C. So the Cartesian, there was some base yeah, change. Definitely. Yeah, right. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. Just the comment of mine is this, that uh, this kind of trick uh, was used uh, very systematically uh, by Voivodsky uh, in his uh, business developing motives. Mm. You know, just this is a good comment. Uh, he mm. did this different, so uh, uh, he did this over a perfect field, dot, dot, dot. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, this diagram uh, was uh, just a kind of main technical tool uh, called uh, standard triples. Mm. Okay, this is just a comment. Yeah, one, uh, I guess I could follow up a bit on that comment, maybe not on the history part of it, but just uh, like, maybe one may wonder like, why can't I just do the same kind of things I do with this curve C already over here? Like, why do I base change? Why can't I just now find a map from U to the affine line over, over S and just keep going? Well, first of all, okay, so G is defined already over S, so that's no problem, G is split. But somehow the point is that like, it's useful to have this relative curve C because then one can massage it later. Like uh, one can change it. I mean, one one exactly. difficulty that I discuss is that uh, is that z really could be kind of a bit too large to fit in the affine space when when the rest of the fields are finite. Z could have too many points, for instance, too many rational points, and more points in the affine line. So one needs to first change c a little bit. So it's useful to have this c so that one can find another c prime and then kind of uh, such a as a section or something, and that one can. That's you can use this uh, to equate uh, two groups. Uh, yeah, uh, that's, uh, yeah. Uh, as you yeah know. that's another point that uh, I don't have to deal with because G is split, but somehow G was more general than kind of here I would be getting a script G and then I would and also have G based on to C and I would need to kind of equate them after localizing C at, at how along that delta and uh, okay so that's a technique in, in papers by Juan and Stavro and Vavilov about how to equate these uh, equate these groups and uh, but also anyway, I, would, yeah well, uh, I would like to mention that uh, why uh, Vavilov uh, Vavilov worked uh, in, ad in additive setting so I, like uh, he tried to prove and proved uh, a kind of very general uh, Gerson type uh, Gerson type results uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, the main idea was, uh, in fact, to build up uh, this uh, uh, relative curve over stack of R uh, with this delta, with bad locus, uh, some bad locus uh, like Z, and then to prove that uh, uh, that this uh, bad locus delta can be moved uh, outside by A1, explicit A1 homotopy outside of uh, the bad locus. Mm. Uh, like as it is wiser, uh, uh, if uh, curve is uh, even smooth, relative smooth, uh, and the, ba uh, the base is local, then uh, you, you not only can expect that this data can be moved uh, uh, by an explicit A1 uh, uh to the C minus Z, uh, but you can do that. And this was the first main trick, but if you develop this further, 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 then uh, you got uh, kind of uh, purity uh, and other results in that mm -hmm. situation. Okay, so so can I ask my question, uh, Ivan? <laughs> Vanya? Okay, sure. so my question is the following: so you 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 had this G torsor E and you, you consider this projective scheme E mod B, okay? And you, yeah. you uh -huh. okay. 
can you say something about E mod P for, for P and another a, a bigger parabolic group? So namely, if, this, if do you know whether this E mod P has a point uh, on, the, on the fraction field, does it at a point? Yeah, I guess this is related to, so, I mean, I'm not really sure of the source, but I think I've learned from Fedorov via conversations that there's a conjecture, uh, if I remember correctly, due to Panin, perhaps he could cor yeah, yeah, sure, correct sure. me that if, yeah, yeah, if yeah, there's yeah. a, <laughs> okay, call it on maybe, that if one has a reductive group scheme over G and it has a parabolic generically of fixed type, then it has a parabolic over R already. Exactly, yeah. And this E mod P, in fact, uh, it's isomorphic to a group of parabolics of fixed type of some uh, of some inner twist of uh, of G, G, G prime, which is just the automorphism like a group of, of G. So this question, like of generically having a point and then having a point, sure. our point is related to this. Uh, I mean, I don't know how to do this, but how to you know prove something not trivial about that conjecture, but it just, uh, uh, there's a, this is translation of, uh, I guess what, okay. I guess, yeah, one would expect that if this has a frac R valued point, uh, then uh, it has an R valued point. If this is non-trivial, non then this is non-trivial. Okay. Uh, th th thank you. Thank you. Maybe a, a last question. Uh, so this uh, another question: Are there some cases of tamely ramified R that you can handle? Uh, I guess I'm not sure what tamely well tamely ramified would mean in the setting. I guess I could mention that. Uh, I expect that uh, that that this uh, main result should should be possible to obtain when G is merely quasi-split rather than split. I didn't really kind of go into detail why I need why I need split rather than quasi-split. Like quasi-splitness was already evident because I had this B and I wanted G mod B and D mod B and uh, really I wanted that co-dimension greater or equal than two. That was real. That was really, really, really useful. Uh, so somehow by using this argument a little bit more intelligently, some parts, I, I especially that patching that, that diagram part, uh, I think one can uh, one can sh one can show this when she is when she is quite split, and I'll be updating my, my manuscript to kind of include this. But uh, as for going beyond uh, for kind of generalizing to arbitrary G in this uh, unramified in the unramified R is a little, I mean, here's like the main reason. Why should be a code mentioned at least two and it needs to be a code mentioned at least two because for all these Bertini later, I need that fiber wise Y be of code mentioned at, at least one and somehow, yeah, it's uh, something that appears only in, in this mixed characteristic case that uh, the way the way the good neighborhoods argument works uh, that uh, I, need, I need. I have a question about this why. Hello. Yeah. I have a question about yes. this why. Can you draw it? I mean, I didn't see it in the when you have this drawing with the projection uh -huh. and the the bad fibers. Where is why in the drawing? Ah, uh, here. So yeah, this one. So yeah, why... in this drawing. Where is why? Why can go through X? That's the problem. Isn't it? Yeah, why? Absolutely. Why could go, go through, through X? X yeah, yeah, but yeah. yeah. Problem that's the whole problem. X, but <laughs> yeah. And that it's what happens to that's, it? It's yeah, something that's fine for X. And then it gets base changed to Z inside the C. Yes. So that's that's a bad local Z. And then we want yeah. to we want to massage the Z. I mean, okay, so then we analyze we then eventually we embed okay, that, the Z it goes to Z. Find okay, it's good to Z. That's the point. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, no, no, so I understand. Y no, becomes okay. it goes to Z. Z. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I think we we, we are going to close uh, the session uh, right now. Of course you, you you can contact the speaker okay for further questions. Uh, let me just say that uh, th there is a ex there is a talk also next Monday by Victor Petrov. Okay, so thanks. Uh, we thank the speaker again, and see you next week.